Fly Tires, welcome to the Fanatical's YouTube channel. This is Aaron at the Fly Desk, and today I'm going to show you how to tie a crawfish pattern that is excellent for bass and big trout. This uh, last weekend, if you guys follow us on Instagram, I posted a picture of a 22-inch trout that ate a tube jig right after he had broke off my son's egg sucking leech. And so my son's leech was still in his mouth and the fish had actually uh, ate a tube jig that looked just like a, a crawdad. And it was Trevor, I think it was Trevor's son that caught the fish and they reeled it in and there's poor Tyler's fly still in its mouth. So that goes along with my theory that I've always said is big trout eat crawdads. It's, it's one of those things that a lot of fly fishermen forget is a very, very good food source for trout. So that being said, I'm going to show you today how to tie a really nice crawdad pattern. So on my crawdads, I like to use um, the Olive Grizzly Marabou. It's a little stiffer than traditional Marabou. And what I do is I cut it off clear down to where I have a pretty thick part of the stem and I just measure it out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie on two clumps of this so once I have one clump on I'm going to tie on a second clump and kind of do the same thing just measure out about how long I want it And I kind of try to tie them on a X so each clump is sticking out a different direction. And then what I do, and I'll turn this so you can see easier, is I actually take my thread, whoops, and I crisscross it around the clumps a couple times. And then I will actually go so far as to wrap my thread around each clump a few times just to keep them effectively divided. So there's one. There's my second one. So now you can see when that goes through the water, it's going to kind of have that crawfish swim backwards and their claws will, will kind of pulsate as they're going through the water. So that's the reason I do that. Move my bead back to the front. Wrap that down nice and tight. Then what I will do is I will take some... Um, just rubber legs, the same kind of legs that you'd put on a hopper or a cicada. And I wrap a couple of those right on top of that marabou, which imitates the antennas that a crawfish has. And I like the legs with a little bit of sparkle in them. And then I'll cut them just longer than my crawfish claws made out of the marabou. Okay, now once I get to this point, um, I like to put a little bit of glue just to make sure everything's set up and stable and so nothing's going to come apart. I'll go a little ways up on the marabou right where I wrapped it 
so as to make sure that that's nice and strong. This fly takes a while to tie, so I want to make sure it's not going to come apart after a giant fish eats it. Okay, then what we'll do is, and today I'm tying on a size 8 hook with 3 8 speed, and I'm going to use a quarter inch um, piece of scud back. And I'm not too worried about taper on this because I actually want it to be bigger in the back and tapered down to the front. So now I've put that on. And then what I like to do is get a little bit of wire and I think on this one I'm going to use some copper wire so this is where I keep all my wires in one of these plastic containers so we're going to pull out some medium ultra wire and copper see it right here just tie a little bit there okay and I'll actually, I'm going to actually put a little super glue on this. Just some Loctite with a brush. Wrap my thread across it one more time. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use some Simicil dubbing. I'm actually going to use some uh, Canadian olive. It's kind of a brownish olive color. A lot of crawdads will have a little bit of purple earlier in the year and then they'll turn more orange. I like this dubbing because it's got a little bit of purple, a little bit of orange, some olive, some brown. About everything that these fish are going to see in a crawdad at certain times during the year. So I put this stuff on extremely liberal. don't get too concerned with the perfect taper although I do like it bigger back here smaller on the front a little bit more on this it's important when you're tying up against a bead like this that you really pack your material in behind that bead because what will happen is if you don't pack that material in your bead will it'll slide back and forth and weaken the fly so I really like to pack that material in so it slides underneath that bead okay then what we're gonna do is we're going to pull over our scud back and we're going to start wrapping and I like to pull it and kind of stretch it and then on my crawdads, I wrap my wire quite a ways apart because I'm gonna make some pretty gnarly legs on this. Okay, now what I do is wrap that wire off. in there all right and then what I do is I cut my tail so it's still got that 
not my tail, but my scud back. So it's kind of got that little flap like the paddle that a crawdad has. And then we're just gonna whip finish it. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our brush and we're gonna brush some legs out of this dubbing material that we put in. We're gonna be extremely liberal with it. Brush the heck out of it. So now we got some nice crawdad legs. So you can see, as that thing's going through the water, these are gonna pulsate back and forth just like a crawdad would. It's a very simple pattern to tie. Nothing too fancy about it. The other thing that we can do this is kind of a custom part that you'll get just from us on the Fanaticals channel is we're going to throw some UV glue eyes on this. Just one on each side. So I put a little bit of brown UV glue, turn it around. Put another eye right there. That eye actually looks pretty snazzy. There, that's better. So you can see we've got our crawdad eyes, got our legs, got his little paddle. And that, my friends, is an extremely effective crawdad pattern. We've caught a lot of big fish on this, um, both bass and trout. So it's a pretty versatile fly that you can use just about anywhere. So there you have it, our crawfish pattern.